Hey guys, this is John. Welcome to another Using the Clock as a Weapon video. First game of the session, playing an International Master. We have a Sicilian. Let's play the Alapin variation. C3 on move 2. Knight f6 and d5 are black's best moves. We're off to the races here. I'm going to take with the queen should black capture. Bit of an offbeat variation. Knight f3, knight c6, queen e4. Okay, early d6 by black. Um, let's capture that. If bishop takes, I can take on g7. So I wonder what black has in mind here. Maybe knight c6. I could play bishop b5. Try to make it semi-difficult for black to get the pawn back. Okay. Let's go knight a3, maybe here, or knight b5. You see this crop up in the alipin from time to time. Trying to move fast. Focusing on that clock as a tool, as a tool to flag your opponent. <laughs> All right. a6. Let's play knight c4. Queen c7 makes sense. So bishop f4 would be great here, but obviously the knight defends. I think I'm just going to continue developing. And maybe queen g4 to be pesky. Mm -hmm. Let's go queen here. I feel like this trade is kind of nice for me because knight b6 is a menace after this. And black is even encouraging me to play it, so I'm going to do so. Taken maybe a4. Pry open this structure. Two bishops. Looks like black has some issues. I like this. B4 runs into bishop takes a6. Just as a PSA, I will blunder in these videos. It's frequent. I know you guys like pointing them out sometimes in the comments. Uh, that's totally fine. I'm glad you're curious about the position. But if you think I made a big mistake and you just post about it, uh, I might not respond. Beware. I would prefer that you actually check the comments first because very often people point out the big mistakes right away and then we get 10 of the same comments pointing it out. And I'm getting a little tired of those sorts of comments, so obviously I'm not going to censor anything, but please do not expect a response. Do check the comments if you're curious because very likely someone has already pointed it out. Okay. Bishop e7, black is going to sack a pawn. They're just going to castle now. All right. So this is a nice development for me. I could keep my king in the center. Uh, let's go bishop e3, no, bishop e3, knight d5. Let's go rook a6 instead. Ooh, maybe I'm inviting this move. <laughs> okay, speaking of blunders, I'm glad my opponent didn't see that. I think that might have been a problem. All right, so let's go here. I guess I could play rook a4 against knight b4, but visually knight b4 looked dangerous for me. Okay, king e2. Let's play bishop d2. Reinforce this guy. We don't need any accidents like king e2, future rook takes c3, or some wild thing like that. Okay. Play this out. Double up the rooks. Nicely ahead on the clock here. Black spent a long time on move 16. I'm just going to swap and then play rook a8. Get a pair of rooks off the board, quite simply. Bishop c5, rook b7. Maybe look for knight e5, or just expand with b4. Okay. Could play c4. That looks nice. I feel like this knight's going to be in trouble. Knight e7. Okay, knight c7. Let's expand. Send this knight into the action. Mm -hmm. Go knight f5. I guess he's going to put the knight here. No, goes over there. All right. go c5 ah rook takes g7 was was possible there i still have this this is a nice idea check and then go knight e7 and go take the rook okay so definitely a winning position
Just need to get my knight back in the game. Let's go here. Looking for knight d5. Yeah, now knight f4 becomes a threat. Check and go pick up the h5 pawn. Guard against this. Check again. Okay. Mm, let's go here. Maybe play knight e6 on the next move. Take the bishop. Okay, black's playing fast, but it's too little too late. You just got to make sure you don't stalemate in such situations. All right, I feel pretty good about that one. I like the Alapin, by the way, as a general recommendation against the Sicilian. I teach this to a lot of my students below like 1800, let's say. It's a simple setup. You're looking to play d4 with the protection of the c pawn. Because a lot of your opponents, if you're at that level below 1800, they'll play moves like d6, e6, knight c6, the normal Sicilian, Sicilian moves, and white can expand and get those two pawns side by side. My opponent played a better line, but at d6 I'm not so sure about. Usually black just plays knight c6, and I was going to put my queen on e4. All right. It's a good start there. Next game. Chusan. All right. Another Sicilian. Uh, why not? Let's try this again. Black playing one of the main lines. D5. Pretty active variation here. Let's play H3. I'll reinforce the center. Attack the queen. And let's look to attack this pawn. See how my opponent responds. All right, goes there. Hmm. I don't really want to trade yet, so I'm just going to do this. And maybe look to play a3. Take the queen. Wouldn't be surprised if black blockades on d5. All right. Hmm, let's play... No, that's not a good move. Let's go queen here. I don't like my queen on the c-file right now. When black plays a future rook c8, I may have trouble, so... Yeah, let's go here now. d5 perhaps on the way. This is an isolated pawn. If I could advance it, that would be great. I think I'm doing fine here. Maybe a tiny pull for white. d5 is annoying for black, and he can't really stop that unless he wants to play queen d5, which he might do, but I could trade queens, play g4, maybe knight e5, expand. All right, keep thinking. Keep thinking, Chusan. <laughs> okay. Now, do I play d5 in this position? Uh, not sure about that. Let's play Let's play rook b1. I'm going to postpone a decision there. Ooh, maybe he'll do this. Oh, that's his plan. Okay. Ah, but now I notice this bishop is running out of squares. Oh, but he can take on b1. All right, that might be fine for me, though. This will get interesting. Take back with the queen. Two minor pieces against a rook. Could also throw in bishop c2 first, but I don't think it makes much of a difference. It's a nice little pattern to know, by the way. g4, g5 against a bishop there that can't escape. But I fully confess that initially I didn't see that my uh, rook on b1 would hang. Okay, let's take it this way. Make it a little bit more annoying for him. Let's do this. He might go ahead and play g5. Okay. All 
Hmm. That knight's actually pretty pesky. I'm going to get rid of it. In the interest of avoiding playing against knights in time scrambles. <laughs> That's the philosophy, guys. Let's go here. D5? I'll try that. There's a little pin going on. My king is slightly open, but I would somewhat prefer white here. Tiny, tiny bit. And the clock is in my favor. Okay. Hmm. So my bishop is loose at the end of this sequence. That's his point. Let's go here. This would be a blunder. So we'll see where he steps with that piece. Probably back to c7 if I had to guess. Now, I might be able to take on e5 here. Just weighing that quickly. I think I can. Let's do it. His rook takes d5 at the end, still runs into bishop h7. Can play rook c3. It's going to do that, okay. Hmm. Okay, let's go here. Threatening 97. Come back. Maybe bishop check now. 96 coming. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have allowed that. Okay, I can still do this move. Might be somewhat better for me. Bring my king up. Ooh, I don't think he can get away with this. His rook's going to have to go back. Okay, now this is winning. I would think. Yeah, I'm too active here. Go after the H-pawn. No breakthroughs really for him. Okay, we'll stay close to his F-pawn. No problem. Check. All right. That game felt pretty good, too. Interesting situation right here after 97 with g4, g5. I think that's good. Let's take a, a very brief look at it. Yep. g4. It was possible here, too, but he does have that square available. The engine still wants to play it though. G4, bishop g6, g5, bishop e7, and then d5. Yeah, okay. Hmm. It wants black to throw in this. Queen b2, and then knight d5. Wow. Take, queen takes, and just wait to take one of the rooks. Yeah, because black does have them forked, so I guess there is no rush. I didn't think, bishop, I saw bishop c2, I didn't think it would change anything. But the engine gives dynamic equality here. Okay, so that is less clear. But as played, I felt pretty good. I think once it gets to this situation, generally the two minor pieces are going to be better than the rook and the pawn. But it depends on some factors. Okay, let's get back in the action. My last clock as a weapon video was eh, 2 out of 5, not great. So I'm fiending for a good score today. And most importantly, good play. All right, let's play the Semislav. Play the Cambridge Springs variation. You cause. Go bishop e7. Uh, what do I want to do here? Let's mix it up. Let's play knight f8 followed by knight e6. I don't often get in these QGD type positions as black. But they're interesting. Play them a lot from the white side. Is he going to go f4? I think he will. Okay. It's castle. Now, how to chip away at white center, assuming white castles. Oh, it's going to go there. All right. Uh, g6 looks pretty natural. Maybe I can get a quick c5 in soon here. I could also play knight g7 and go for bishop f5. All right. He's playing this aggressive, though. 
Yeah, now I'm a little less enthusiastic about c5, although still may have some merit. Yeah, actually, might be decent. Let's try it. So I have this in mind, but also c4. Knight back, but I can play c4. And that piece is trapped. Yeah. Another minor piece trap situation. Is he going to tee off on g6? Sacking two pieces doesn't look sound. I can always block with, say, my knight on g7 at the end. So yeah, he's facing a conundrum here. He'll probably still take on g6, bishop takes, I would imagine. And then try to attack something like this. Ooh, he takes that way. Okay. So now I want to get my rook over to c8. That would be excellent. First, though, what to do? Let's go knight here. He's almost certainly going to move his king. And then I'll play bishop e6. Yeah. Looking awesome here. Thinking about knight f5. Also, maybe something like queen b6. Keep it simple. a6, b5, maybe? Hmm. Let's play a6. So I'm up for a piece for two pawns here, so trades in general are probably not that bad. I do have to watch these pawns if they start running. But given my attacking chances against white's king, I think I'm going to go in that direction. d5, wow. Okay, so queen takes, bishop takes g6. Yeah, and bishop takes may also run into issues, perhaps. Does it? I don't know. He might be bluffing with that move. It feels kind of bluffy. I'm going to take. If bishop here, I can give a check. And if bishop e4, I'm taking with check. Let's call his bluff. What I hope is a bluff. Now here. Hmm. Let's go queen a5. Okay, line up with the queen. So I picked off a pawn clean. Mm, and now he wants to trade. Yeah, you know, strangely, I still don't want to trade. I don't think I have to concede ground here. Like, let his knight get into c5. Let's just do this. Take with the bishop, that would be great. Knight e6 now. I know, guys, avoiding the queen trade. Who is this John Bartholomew you see on your screen right now? Is this the I am we know and love? <laughs> okay, here perhaps? Yeah, let's do this. The f4 was hanging too, but I have an idea. I'm going to go after the queen and the knight. Queen a5, I can trade and then take d1. Yeah, this should be good. Okay, bring this back. Now he's got to scramble for as many pawns as possible. Let's go here, protect a6. And just play fast. Take that, and take that. All right. Yeah, so he played kind of loose there, and it really started when he played knight e2. That led to the trap of the knight. I think this is a pretty risky plan for white. This is a theme in these structures, so posting a knight on e5, that is a strong piece. I could take it right away, definitely. In hindsight, I didn't think about that too seriously in the game because I didn't think there was a rush. But that is a strong piece, no doubt. But I think this combo of this structure with castling queenside when I have c5, a typical undermining move against this structure. I think that's a little sketchy for white. Let me see if my evaluation was on point here. I'm just going to go to move 13. I hope that the engine says I'm better here, as that would kind of validate my line of thinking. Yeah, c5, about a half pawn advantage for black. Because 
it looks like the queen side is more likely to open here than the king side. Even though I've made this move, g6, this pawn is very well reinforced. Again, all these captures on g6 that are possible don't really amount to much. Even here, when white's bishop got trapped. If white does this, it looks a little scary, right? But I always have knight g7 or bishop g7 even. Uh, bishop f5 is on the way. It's too much material. Queen e8. All right, two games left in the session. We always play five games, five games only, in using the clock as a weapon. Okay, same opponent. Let's stick with e4. Seems to be working well. Karokhan, hmm. All right, let's play d4. I'll go for the advance. Let's play h4. Okay, yep, this is one of the principal variations. Um, let's play, let's play bishop d3. This looks a little odd, but black is covering the e6 square with this. So it has merit for sure. Okay, play c3 now. And a lot of times white goes all in and plays f4 in these setups. Okay, let's play a3 here. I want to control this square a little bit better. Knight c6, I might play bishop c2. Okay, so black's going for a trade of those bishops. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, don't want to think too long here. B4 is a strong consideration. Let's play that. Probable trade. I moved a lot of pawns in the opening. You can just see by the move list here. <laughs> so eight of my first 10 moves have been pawn moves. Okay, here I could take on B5, take with the knight. Let's play it this way. Hmm, that goes to d7. That feels a bit wrong. But who am I to question it? Just make a move. I think black must capture. So he's wasting some time here. Okay. Bishop e3, let's be solid. Maybe knight a4, knight c5 in the near future. Black could try to put this rook in on c4. But I have some fun ideas in mind. Knight f4 followed by this maybe. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to try to send that knight into c5. Queen a6. So he is showing a willingness to trade. All right, guess I'm agreeable to that. Let's play the king to d2. This seems like a pretty reasonable semi-end game for me. Maybe b6 is a good move, though. Hmm, maybe I could have taken some measure against that. All right, I'll just trade. And then bring this over. Play h5. I don't want him playing h5, so I'll do it myself. He has to unwind his pieces a little bit, so maybe I can squeeze him now. f4, knight g3, f5, something like that. He's probably going to try to unwind like this. Oh, he plays the rook in. Okay. Yeah, he's using that square pretty nicely. It's another good move. I'm probably going to send my knight to b2 to try to dislodge him. Maybe I could have sent it over to a4 and then to b2, but we'll do it this way. Looks like one of these positions where black may consider sacrificing the exchange. Like, I wouldn't be shocked to see this move here. Because strategically, it makes sense. No, he's going to take. Wow. And he's going to back off, I guess. Okay. I say wow, because visually, this looks nice for me. Let's do this. 
All right, we're both under a minute now, so less less talky, more movie, John. Feel free to remind me about that. <laughs> less talky, more movie. Mm, yeah, he wants B6 and then into C4. So let's do this. My idea is this looks strong now. H6 is going to fall. Take that. And G6 followed by this. Looking nice, looking nice. Uh, I think that wins. That should be decisive. I'm just going to take. When he takes my bishop, I push G7. I'm threatening to queen in two different ways. They're both protected. Yeah, he's not going to survive this. Nice. The power of those pass pawns. Okay. Yeah, I think after rook f1, he's in dire straits. The threat is to trade and then infiltrate rook f7. So fortunately, I was able to do that before he inserts something like this. My knight is not great. It's just basically playing defense here. But yeah, rook f8 is natural. Maybe he has some other move here, but it looks very difficult. All right, let's fire up this last game. Playing this fairly late at night again, by the way. 11 o'clock p.m. You know what? Scandy it is for the last game against Ved. Let's go. 25-35. All mainline stuff. I've had this a lot in, re in recent months. Bishop e2. Okay. Modest move. I'll just play c6 and then e6. Normal development is fine here. 95. We'll take that. Okay. I could throw in rook d8 here. I could also just play knight d5. Uh, rook d8 might be worth playing. Although, hmm. This is kind of a minor moment, so I don't know that I should be using too much time. Let's actually play knight d7. I wonder how he's going to defend this guy. Rook d8, I wasn't liking queen e1 with maybe some alignment issues with the queens. So I'll play knight d7. Knight d5 might have been okay there too. Okay, so he's going to dare me to take that. Which I can definitely think about. Take b4, queen c7, queen d4, f6, something like that. I love material, guys, so let's go for it. <laughs> let's try it. Queen d4, I can also play bishop d6, but I think he's, his idea is he's going to play rook d1 after that. Although, I would be threatening... Okay, this is important. I have knight f3 as an idea here. Along with just bishop d6. Maybe bishop d6 is simplest. Let's do that. I want to castle queen, uh, kingside if possible. Yeah, let's do this. If he plays bishop f1, maybe go here. This looks like a clean extra pawn. Not seeing much compensation at all for him. He's played b4, but that's about it. Okay, speed up a little bit. Let's take that. Queen b6, maybe? That gives up queen f4. Just play h6. Useful move. Bring the rook in. Get ready to double. He's going to f3. Okay, fine. My knight is annoying as well. It's guarding e5. Maybe c5 here? Let's try it.
Play b6, stabilize. How to make progress now. Lots of options. Bishop d3, maybe? Yeah. That's a pretty good defender of his king. I kind of liked my bishop, too, but if I can swap this off, that would be nice. He's probably not going to take. But ultimately, I want to land my rook on d2. Let's do this now. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can even start snaking my queen over here. Yeah, I'm pretty much dominating the position now because I own the D file. It's the only truly open file in the position. Rook here, maybe? Let's try at least. He'll probably play his rook back to C1. Yeah, I still own this, so let's do this. I'm obviously not going to repeat and make a draw. Oh, I got to speed up. Okay, he wants to trade. Okay. Um, let's play e5. Go e4. He's going to be playing for that clock. He has no choice at this point. Okay. Just bring the king up. Oh, hello. He got a little greedy going to the seventh rank right away. <laughs> yeah, couldn't do that immediately, buddy. Needed to play something like f3 first. But that's why I kept my knight around on g4 for so long. It's annoying. It's very annoying around white's king, guarding h2 and f2. All right, so five out of five. I scored five out of five two videos ago, so really happy to get that score, especially tonight. It's been a stressful week. Uh, our state here, I live in Minnesota in the U.S., and they're imposing some new lockdowns and restrictions. Just a tough time, I'm sure it is, uh, in many of uh, our viewers' neck of the woods as well. So, yeah, stressful times, but chess is always something that helps me unwind and de-stress. And I like sharing it with you guys, so thank you so much for watching. Felt pretty good about this game. He didn't prove compensation after I took on e5. I really thought he was going to play queen d4 here, but I think f6 is probably all right. Let me just check that real quick, though. Yeah, this is a pretty innocuous setup for white. The bishop on e2, it's not a serious try for an advantage. White's just playing logical moves, developing, but black doesn't have anything to worry about. Let's just see what the computer thinks about this position, though. Also here, I was wondering where to play. Yeah, rook d8, queen e1. wasn't quite so thrilled about that because I thought there might be some... Let's say I play knight here. Knight takes d5. Well, I guess I can take knight c7, king d7. Go recover the knight. That does look pretty good. But knight d7 also is compelling. This is just a hard pawn to guard. Yeah, and the engine approves. John tested. Engine approved. We like that. And it does say white should try queen d4 here. It says bishop d6 is all right. I was also thinking f6, even though Ben Feingold says never play f6. It's probably all right with e6 guarded. And also white's knight can't get in the action here. If white could maneuver around and attack one of these points easily, that would be perhaps a different scenario, but I think it's okay. Ah, and yeah, bishop d6 is fine because here I can play check. That is important. Yeah, I was only seeing something like rook d8 runs into uh, bishop takes e5. Oh, I guess even that's fine. Queen takes d6. Okay, that's creative. Take and then bishop takes. Go for the pin. Hmm. Yeah, so I would have tried queen d4 if I were white, but I think f6 is reasonable. Okay, so notched a good score in this one. This is fun. I hope you guys like these videos too. Uh, again, if I miss something, feel free to you know, indulge your curiosity about it. Definitely not holding anyone back, but I just like to cut down in the comment section. 
I do monitor the comments. I try to respond to a lot of people, but I'd like to cut down on the the repeated comments specifically about blunders. It's just the by far the most common thing that people ask about. And if you see an obvious looking blunder, check the comments because there's probably a discussion going on it. Uh, otherwise, I'm obviously very happy to interact with you guys and, and answer stuff. So thanks again. I'll be back soon with another video. Take care, guys. Be safe.